everyone, and welcome to today's deep dive. We're going to be exploring some pretty wild concepts today, stuff like reality and consciousness and spirituality yeah. and, you know, all the big questions. Right, right. We've got a bunch of sources to help us out on this journey. Okay, cool. We've got a couple of YouTube videos, one from Cryon and one from Tom Campbell. Yeah. And then we have some text excerpts and even a PDF. Mm. It looks like it's a handbook for, like, ascending. Okay. But anyway, one quote from that Cryon video just really stood out to me. He describes humans as like almost like cartoon characters coming to life. Okay. Stepping off of a 2D page. You're right. You know, <laughs> and experiencing 3D for the first time. Yeah. And totally freaking out because it's so new and confusing. Sure. What do you make of that analogy? It's a powerful image for sure. Yeah. I think it kind of hints at something really deep about our perception. You know, we're limited yeah. if reality is actually multidimensional, right. like Tom Campbell and an Ascension Handbook mm -hmm. suggest. Yeah. Then we are basically those cartoon characters, you know, struggling to get the bigger picture. Yeah. From our 3D point of view. So we're like flatlanders, yeah. certainly thrust into this world of yeah. depth and dimension. It makes you wonder, like, what is this page that we're stepping off of? Right. What is this virtual reality that we're supposedly inhabiting. Well, an Ascension Handbook and Tom Campbell both point to the idea that reality is basically a product of consciousness. Think of it as a simulation generated by a larger consciousness system. Okay. And we are essentially players within that system. Oh. Remember that excerpt? Reality equals information. Yeah. Like everything we see, everything we perceive, our bodies, the world around us. Right. It's all information within this grand simulation. Hold on, I gotta catch my breath here. Sure. So if we're all essentially like data points in some cosmic computer program, does that mean free will is just an illusion? Right. Are we really making choices? Or is everything predetermined? It's a great question. It's a question that's been around for centuries. Right. Philosophers, scientists, everyone's pondered it. Yeah. Tom Campbell actually offers an interesting perspective though. Okay. He says free will does exist. Okay but it exists within this virtual reality. Okay. We have the ability to make choices mm -hmm. and we learn from them, mm -hmm. even if those choices yeah. are ultimately unfolding within a larger system. So it's like we have some freedom within the game, even if the game has rules and parameters, Yeah. but then it makes you think like, what's the point of the game? What are we supposed to be learning here? Well, Tom Campbell talks about entropy reduction, which basically means becoming more loving. Okay. It's about increasing mm. the quality of our consciousness. And this actually aligns with an Ascension Handbook, mm. which emphasizes releasing cellular shame and moving into an era of co-creation. So the more we learn and grow, the yeah. more we contribute okay. to the evolution of the collective consciousness. It's yeah. like we're all in this together, whether we realize it or not. Yeah. But Cryon also brings up a shadow side to all this. The potential for fear and misunderstanding right. when it comes to esoteric practices. He mm. mentions like kinesiology, pendulums astrology, being mislabeled as evil or cult-like. Yeah. Why do you think these practices evoke such strong reactions in some people? I think it's understandable mm -hmm. that people might react with fear or skepticism right. when they encounter ideas yeah. that challenge their worldview, right. especially when those ideas seem to fall outside uh -huh. of mainstream science. Yeah. There's this tendency to label anything unfamiliar or unconventional as dangerous or even demonic. So how do we navigate that? How do we approach these esoteric practices with an open mind, well, without getting lost in dogma or fear-mongering? Well, Tom Campbell advocates for what he calls evidential experiential exercises. Okay. His approach is all about testing these concepts firsthand. Right. Using methods like remote viewing. Okay. Which he argues can provide evidence for non-physical realities. So it's not about blind faith or accepting things at face value. It's about exploring these concepts ourselves and gathering evidence to support or refute them. Exactly. That resonates with me. What I appreciate about Tom Campbell is that he brings a scientific mindset yeah. to these often mystified topics. Absolutely. And if we apply that same open-minded, mm. evidence-based approach to energy healing techniques, right. we can see that they're based on the idea that consciousness can interact with yeah. and influence the physical body. Okay and potentially even reality itself. I keep thinking about that line from an Ascension Handbook where they describe the book itself as a manifestation of energy. They even say that. Subatomic particles of conscious energy make the atoms of the paper and ink. Wow. It's like they're suggesting. That even physical objects and we're in, in some, some way. Co-created through consciousness. Yeah. It makes you wonder, 
If this book is a product of conscious energy, what about the rest of our reality? Yeah, it's a mind-bending concept. Mm -hmm. And an Ascension Handbook mm. really encourages us to embrace this paradigm shift it calls for, mm. a collective awakening of light workers, individuals, dedicated to raising the vibration of the planet through their intentions and actions. Okay, I gotta admit, I'm feeling a shift in my own awareness just talking about this. But before we go too far down that rabbit hole, let's bring in another fascinating source, the raw contact. Okay. This one introduces the law of one, which seems to be like a core principle connecting many of these ideas. What's your take on the law of one and how it fits into this bigger picture? Well, the raw contact describes the law of one as the fundamental principle governing all of creation it emphasizes service to others and the interconnectedness of all things, themes that we see throughout all these sources. Right. And then there's this idea of densities or mm -hmm. levels of consciousness, which seems to mesh with Tom Campbell's virtual reality framework. Right. Can you unpack that a bit? Yeah. So the raw contact explains that our planet is transitioning from third to fourth density. It's a period marked by increased spiritual awareness. Yeah. The potential for a harvest of souls. Hold on. Harvest. Does that mean we're talking spaceships beaming people up? Because yeah. now we're really getting into science fiction territory. Not quite. The harvest is more of a natural progression. Yeah. Based on the vibrational frequency mm. of individuals and the planet itself. Okay. Those who have aligned themselves mm. with the law of one yeah. will naturally transition to fourth density as the planet's vibration rises. Okay, so it's less about physical spaceships and more about a shift in consciousness, a graduation to a higher level of being. Exactly. Still pretty intense, though. And the rock contact also brings in these other players. Right. The Confederation of Planets and the Orion Group are those, like, intergalactic cheerleaders mm. and villains yes. influencing our evolution. In a sense, yes. The Confederation of Planets mm. represents a collective of positively oriented beings dedicated to assisting humanity in its evolution. They operate within the framework uh. of the law of one, offering guidance and support without interfering with our free will. So they're like cosmic mentors offering a helping hand, but ultimately allowing us to chart our own course. Right. What about this Orion group? Are they the bad guys in this cosmic drama? According to Ra, the Orion group is a collection of beings with a service to self-orientation, yeah. they seek to manipulate and control others mm -hmm. for their own gain. So we've got this cosmic tug of war going on between forces of love and forces of control. Sounds like something straight out of Star Wars. Right. But amid all this cosmic drama, the raw contact also introduces this intriguing concept of wanderers. Yes. What exactly are wanderers and what role do they play in all of this? Wanderers are souls. Oh from higher densities okay. who choose to incarnate on Earth okay. to assist in its evolution. So they're like spiritual volunteers coming down from higher dimensions to lend a hand. Yeah. You could say that. That's inspiring. Yeah. And maybe a little intimidating. Right. It is remarkable. Imagine having that level of awareness yeah. and choosing to incarnate into this world, yeah. knowing you'll likely forget who you truly are. Right. It speaks volumes about their dedication and compassion. And it makes you wonder, are any of us wanderers? Are we here on a mission, even if we don't consciously remember it? That's a fascinating question. The raw contact suggests mm -hmm. that many wanderers feel drawn to spiritual exploration and have a deep yearning to connect with their purpose. Okay. Does that resonate with you? I'm definitely feeling a pull towards these ideas. But before we dive too deep into that, I want to bring up another point from the raw contact. That caught my attention, the I emphasis on balancing energy centers yeah. and the role of emotions yeah. in influencing our health and well-being. The raw contact describes a system of seven energy centers or chakras, each corresponding to different aspects of our being. When these centers are balanced and flowing freely, we experience optimal health and vitality. Yeah. However, when they become blocked or distorted, it can manifest as physical, emotional, or spiritual imbalances. Uh -huh. So our emotional state has a direct impact on our physical health. Yeah. I'm thinking about that example from the raw contact, yeah. about the link between suppressed anger and the development of cancer. Right. It's a powerful reminder that our thoughts and feelings have a very real impact on our physical bodies. Absolutely. And this is where those energy healing techniques we discussed come into play. By consciously working with our energy centers, we can address those blockages right. and restore harmony to our entire being. Right. It seems like self-awareness is key here. The more we understand our unique energy system and our own patterns, the more empowered we become. 
to make positive changes. Exactly. And this ties in beautifully yeah. with the law of one's emphasis on personal responsibility. We have the power to heal ourselves mm -hmm. and to contribute to the collective healing of the planet by consciously choosing thoughts, feelings, and actions aligned with love and light. This deep dive is shaping up to be quite a ride. We've gone from cartoon characters to cosmic simulations, energy centers to interdimensional beings, all while exploring the very principles of creation and the power of conscious choice. I don't know if my brain has fully processed it all yet, but I'm definitely intrigued. It's a lot to take in, that's for sure. But that's the beauty of this journey, isn't it? These sources offer a glimpse into a vast and fascinating reality, mm. inviting us to keep exploring, questioning, yeah. and expanding our awareness. And that's exactly what we'll do in our next segment. We'll delve deeper into the specifics of fourth density, the challenges and opportunities of the harvest, and the practical implications of living in alignment with the law of one. Stay tuned. All right, so we've established that. Earth is in this transition phase, moving from third to fourth density. Right. But what does that actually look like? What are we transitioning towards? Cryon mentions peace on Earth, oh. and an Ascension handbook talks about this era of co-creation. But can you paint a more vivid picture of what daily life might be like? In fourth density, imagine a world where compassion and understanding aren't just lofty ideals. Yeah but the foundation of how people interact. Okay. Where cooperation replaces competition. And material wealth takes a backseat to spiritual growth and service to others. Yeah. That's the essence of fourth density. Okay, it sounds idyllic, but also maybe a little intense. Like, are we talking about a world where everyone's walking around, radiating love and light 24-7? Sure. What about those of us who, you know, enjoy a sarcastic quip <laughs> or a good Netflix binge every now and then? Right. Is there room for that? Yeah. In fourth density? Of course. Yeah. Fourth density isn't about erasing our personalities or becoming some kind of emotionless, mm. petually blissful beings. Right. It's about refining our understanding yeah. of ourselves and the world around us, yeah. expressing our individuality right. in a way that aligns with the law of one. Okay. There's still plenty of room <sighs> for humor and creativity yeah. and all the things that make us human. Okay, that's a relief. So it's not about erasing our personalities, but about evolving them, yeah. becoming more conscious and compassionate versions of ourselves. Precisely. And the raw contact really emphasizes that fourth density is a realm of increased understanding. Imagine being able to perceive the interconnectedness of all things, wow. to see the web of energy that connects us all, to truly grasp the implications of the law of one yeah. in a tangible way. It would fundamentally transform how we interact with each other, with the planet, and even with ourselves. If fourth density is so great, why aren't we all there already? What's holding us back? Well, it comes down to a matter of vibration, okay. both individual and collective. As individuals, we need to align our thoughts, feelings, and actions with the principles of the law of one, mm -hmm. choosing love over fear, compassion over judgment, and service to others over self-interest. Collectively, we need to raise the overall vibration of the planet, shifting from a predominantly fear-based consciousness to one that is rooted in love and understanding. So it's like we're all in this giant classroom together, yeah. and we need to collectively reach a certain threshold of understanding and compassion mm. to move on to the next grade. But how do we know when we're getting closer? Are there any signs that we're moving in the right direction? Cryon suggests that there are individuals already doing fourth density work. Okay. They act as beacons, radiating their light yeah. and helping to raise the vibration of those around them. So they're paving the way showing what's possible. Exactly. And those would be our wanderers, right? Yeah. The souls from higher densities. Who chose to come down here and help us out? Many of them, yes. But it can't just be up to them, can it? The rest of us have to be doing something too, right? We're, remember, the choice always comes back to us. Okay. We each have the power to awaken to our own inner light yeah. and contribute to the collective shift. Okay, so how do we do that? What are some practical steps we can take to raise our vibration and align with the law of one? Is it about chanting mantras or meditating on mountaintops? The Rho Contact highlights the importance of practices like meditation, contemplation, and prayer okay. as ways to connect with our inner selves and ah. tap into a larger wisdom. So quieting the mind, getting out of our heads, and connecting with something bigger than ourselves. Exactly. But what about those of us who struggle to sit still? or quiet our thoughts. Are there other approaches that might resonate more? Absolutely. Tom Campbell, for example, emphasizes the power of meditation right. to expand consciousness right. and access higher levels of awareness. He even outlines techniques for energy healing, suggesting that we can address blockages 
in our energy centers okay. and restore harmony to our mind, body, and spirit. So we've got meditation for yeah. connecting with our inner selves and energy healing for addressing imbalances. What else can we do? Are there any other tools or practices that can help us in this process of personal transformation? Well, an Ascension Handbook suggests okay. that we can actively work towards releasing cellular shame and embracing co-creation. We can challenge the limiting beliefs we might have inherited, okay. recognizing that we are not defined oh, okay. by our past experiences. We have the power to rewrite our stories and yes. co-create a future aligned with our highest potential. Okay, that's empowering. It's not about dwelling on the past or feeling stuck. In our current circumstances, right. it's about acknowledging that we have the power to choose a different path, a path aligned with a love light and our true selves. Exactly. And it's important to remember yeah. that we're not alone in this journey, Quinlan reminds us, that there's a system, yeah. a network of intuitive support guiding us every step of the way. And the raw contact echoes this, suggesting that the Confederation of Planets is also present, offering assistance and encouragement. As we navigate this time of transition, it's reassuring to know we have a whole team of cosmic cheerleaders mm -hmm. rooting for us. But even with all that support, I imagine the transition to fourth density isn't always smooth sailing. What are some of the challenges we might encounter along the way? What bumps might we hit on this road to a higher vibration? The raw contact refers to this period as yeah. the way of confusion. That's yeah. the time when the veil between dimensions thins, making it easier mm -hmm. to access higher levels of consciousness, but also making us more susceptible to negative influences. So we're more sensitive to both positive and negative energies. Right. That sounds like a recipe for some intense emotional whiplash. Yeah. How do we stay grounded and centered amidst that kind of energetic turbulence? It can be challenging, that's for sure. Hmm. And that's why discernment is oh. so important. We need to be aware of the thoughts, feelings, yeah. and influences we allow yeah. into our consciousness. Hmm. Choosing those that align with love and light and rejecting those that are rooted in fear and manipulation. So it's like we're navigating a minefield of information and energy, and we need to develop our own internal compass right. to guide us. But how do we find that compass? How do we learn to trust that inner voice amidst all the noise and confusion of the world? It's a process yeah. of learning to listen to our intuition, our inner knowing that connection to the wisdom of the universe. Uh -uh. It's the voice of our higher selves guiding us towards truth, love, and our highest potential. Practices like meditation can help, but it's also about paying attention to our dreams, <laughs> noticing synchronicities, mm -hmm. and trusting those gut feelings. That arise from deep within. So it's about becoming more attuned to those subtle whispers from the universe, yeah. those signs and symbols that are constantly guiding us. Like we're all playing this giant cosmic scavenger hunt and the clues are everywhere if we just know how to look. I love that analogy. It reminds us that this journey is meant to be an adventure, a process of discovery and exploration. The more we open ourselves to the possibilities, the more we'll uncover the hidden treasures waiting for us. So we're navigating the way of confusion, learning to trust our intuition mm -hmm. and becoming more discerning about the influences we allow into our lives. What else do we need to know about this transition to fourth density? What about the harvest? Is there a specific moment when everyone suddenly shifts to a higher dimension? According to the racket contact, the harvest is a gradual process, okay. not a sudden event. As the planet's vibration increases, those aligned with the law of one mm -hmm. will naturally transition to fourth density. It's like a ripening a coming into fullness, mm -hmm. a graduation to a higher level of being. So no spaceships beaming people up. It's more of an internal shift. Right. A transformation of consciousness that unfolds over time. Precise. And the timing of this transition varies depending on individual and collective readiness. Ra suggests that Earth is currently in a period of accelerated evolution, moving rapidly towards the harvest. But ultimately, it's up to each of us to choose the path we want to follow. So we still have free will, even within this grand cosmic plan. We get to choose whether we want to graduate to fourth density or remain in third density. What happens to those who choose to stay? Do they get left behind? The raw contact explains that those who aren't ready for fourth density will continue their evolution on another third density planet. Okay. Experiencing another cycle of learning and growth. It's not a punishment, but simply a continuation of the journey. Okay. So it's not about being good enough or worthy enough to graduate. Uh -huh. It's about aligning our vibration with the frequency of fourth density 
and choosing to continue our evolution yeah. on that path. But you mentioned earlier that Earth is an unusual case, that this transition is happening in a unique way. What makes our planet so special? That's a great question. Yeah. And that's something we'll explore in our next segment as we delve into. The history of Earth's evolution, the influence of other civilizations, and the specific challenges and triumphs that have shaped our journey thus far. We've been like really diving deep into this idea of Earth's transition to fourth density. But as right. you mentioned, there are other layers to this story. Right. Earth's history is intertwined with other civilizations, yeah. both within our solar system and perhaps even beyond. Right. How have those interactions shaped our evolutionary journey? It's fascinating to consider, isn't it? The raw contact talks about a planet called Maldek that was destroyed. Makes mm -hmm. you wonder if there was some kind of intergalactic conflict. Yeah, that influenced our path. I'm getting those Star Wars vibes again. Did their destruction somehow affect us here on Earth? Well, the rock contact doesn't describe it as a war in the conventional sense. They explain that Maldek was a planet in our solar system mm -hmm. on a similar evolutionary trajectory to Earth. However, the beings on Maldek chose a path of service to self, focusing on power and control, which ultimately led to their planet's destruction. Whoa, their negativity literally blew up their planet. That's a sobering thought. But what does this have to do with us here on Earth? According to the Rock Contact, some of the beings from Aldeck were able to reincarnate on Earth after their planet's destruction, what? bringing with them the karmic residue over their choices. Okay. It suggests that this influx of souls who hadn't yet learned the lessons of balance contributed to some of the challenges and distortions we see on Earth. So we inherited their karmic baggage. That doesn't seem very fair, but I guess it could explain why there's been so much conflict and suffering throughout human history. It's one perspective to consider. However, the rock contact also emphasizes that we always have the opportunity to learn from past mistakes and choose a different path. Maybe the beings from Maldek serve as a cosmic cautionary tale, reminding us of the importance of choosing love over fear. Okay, so we've got this Maldek backstory, but we also have these other groups influencing Earth. Right, Confederation of Planets and the Orion Group. Are they still involved in our evolution? Even today, do oh, they have okay. a stake? in how things play out here. The Rock Contact suggests that the Confederation of Planets continues to act as a guide for those seeking to align with the law of one, Okay. but they operate under a strict policy of non-interference, respecting our free will. They're available to offer assistance and guidance, if we ask, but they won't force anything on us. So they're more like cosmic advisors than puppet masters. That's a good way to put it. They respect our right to choose, okay. our own path. But the Rat Contact also describes the Orion Group as a collection of negatively oriented beings who are still interacting with Earth, okay. attempting to influence us towards a path of service to self. So we're still in the middle uh -huh. of this cosmic tug of war, yeah. the Confederation of Planets on one side, encouraging us towards love and light, and the Orion Group on the other, trying to sway us towards a less harmonious path. It's a lot to take in. How do we even know what's true? Amidst all these competing influences, that's where discernment become so crucial. Right. It's about developing our intuition, that inner compass, and learning to trust the quiet voice within. Okay. It's also about being mindful of the information we allow into our consciousness, yeah. questioning everything, and seeking out sources that resonate with our hearts and souls. So it's not about blindly accepting any information that comes our way, whether it's from ancient texts, spiritual teachers, or even seemingly credible researchers. We each have to figure out what rings true for ourselves? Absolutely. It's about becoming yeah. our own authorities, using our critical thinking skills, intuition, yeah. and inner wisdom yeah. to discern what feels right for us. Truth often has many facets, and what resonates as truth for one person, but not for another. It's about being open to exploring different perspectives mm -hmm. and trusting our own process of discovery. That makes sense. It's not about finding one definitive answer, but about engaging in an ongoing process of learning and growth. Right. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the key takeaway you hope listeners walk away with? I think the most important takeaway is that we are not passive observers in this cosmic drama. We are active participants mm. in our own evolution and in the evolution of our planet. We have the power to choose, to create, to shape the reality we experience both individually and collectively. That's a powerful reminder. It's not about waiting 
for some external force to save us or fix the world. It's about recognizing our own agency, our ability to make choices that contribute to a more loving, yeah. compassionate, and harmonious reality. Precisely. And as we move through this time of transition, as the veil between dimensions thins and the energy on the planet intensifies, it becomes even more crucial to make conscious choices that align with love light and service to others. It sounds like we're all being called to step into our power, to embrace our responsibility as co-creators of a future that reflects our highest aspirations. Beautifully said. And on that note, I want to leave our listeners with a final thought to ponder. If reality is indeed a virtual reality created by consciousness, as Tom Campbell and others suggest, what does that mean for how we live our lives, how we treat each other, and how we shape the future of our world? It's a question worth reflecting on. It certainly is. We've covered a vast and fascinating landscape of ideas today, and I hope our listeners feel inspired to continue exploring, questioning, and deepening their understanding of this incredible journey we're all on. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep seeking, keep questioning, and keep trusting your own inner compass